All right, welcome to the regular scheduled council meeting for October 7, 2019 at 7 p.m. Um, we'll do the uh, roll call. Ms. Burner, when you're ready, please. Someone tell Mayor my Here. Mr. Chairman. Here. Ms. Hopkins. Here. Ms. Eggleston. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook? Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Here. Seven members present. Thank you. And tonight's invocation will be by Vice Mayor Lindsay. <coughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, once again we come to you, Father, to ask your blessings upon this meeting, our staff, and our citizens. Father, we ask you to keep a loving hand on our police department, our fire, firefighters, and our EMS people. Lord, we ask you to keep an eye hand on our military and just touch this uh, city with your grace, Father. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll need action on the uh, work session schedule on 9 319. Motion to accept the minute on 9319. Second. Cobb and Jimmy. Ms. Hopkins? Abstain. It should say 9619. Oh. We were all here at that meeting. Oh, okay. Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. What? Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shane? Yes. Minutes accepted 7 0. Is that 9 3 should it say what? 16. 16. Yeah. Okay, you got to change it on the minutes then. On okay. the minutes it says Tuesday, Does September 3rd. All right. And then we'll need a motion for the minutes for the regular scheduled council meeting on 9 16 19. <laughs> Mr. Vice Mayor and Mr. Cobb, second. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Minutes accepted 7 0. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor? Uh, I wouldn't. Uh, mentioned in the minutes please check spelling of names mr larry we, we emailed about that earlier yeah this is for the it's minutes. like it has but it's been fixed spellings but it's been fixed has it? yeah no least, it, you emailed me about the agenda on the minutes the actual minutes so it was on the front page yeah, I said on the front page it was wrong. Yeah, right on the agenda. Right. He's talking about when he, she writes them. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see what you're saying. Yep. Gotcha. <laughs> and then um, council's going to make a motion to uh, change the minutes to say September 16th. They say September 3rd. Council. So moved. Second. Ms. Hopkins. Yes. Ms. Eggleston. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Motion accepted 7-0. Thank you. Communications down to the city manager's report. Mr. Bridge, good evening. Yep. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council, <coughs> members of the public. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. Mr. Uh, Bridge, excuse me for just a second. Are you yeah. sure? I didn't want to listen. Didn't you miss me? Did you miss Mr. Shammy? Yeah, just stop it, Mr. Mayor. Yes. <laughs> All right. Continue, Mr. Bridge, please. Sure. Under information items, new building update. Um, final bid should be going out. I actually attached the updated Gantt chart. Uh, the Gantt chart just simply is a visual representation of the time frame. This is actually uh, developed and administered by the architect that we hired. Uh, so uh, actual building design is done. Uh, I did have a meeting with them last week. Um, it will be out to bid here hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Uh, now that the final floor plan, and, uh, namely the electrical and the HVAC systems are now uh, sketched out, uh, I 
wasn't too happy to hear this, uh, but I will relay it to council. We may have to abate the asbestos that's in there, given how they're going to do now do the HVAC <coughs> on the second floor and the front three offices. Uh, normally, they thought they could just put a pretty much essentially a protective layer on it. Um, but now, how they're having to do the HVAC, they don't know if they can do that. So it's, we don't know the final answer yet. I do have uh, an email out on behalf of the architect to uh, Mark, uh, Mike Leapy from Leapy Enterprises. We hired them twice last year to do the asbestos report for the school and also the asbestos report for the new building. Um, I don't know the price, the abate the, abasement, abate the abas asbestos if we need to for the new building. Uh, but we do know there was $30,000 to abate the whole of Madison Street School. So we can expect that to be significantly less expensive uh, than the $30,000. I'm still waiting to hear back from the actual asbestos company. They may have a different alternative, so we don't have to abate that. As soon as I get the information, I will rely that with council, and council uh, can decide how you guys want to proceed with that. Um, Sunshine Law Training, there is legislation on this uh, later tonight. We also discuss it in the work session. Um, there will be a resolution allowing me to attend on behalf of uh, Councilwoman Hopkins, also Councilwoman Eagleston. Both of these councilwomen are scheduled to be there with me, but as such a case something comes up, they will not be able to attend on Thursday the 24th. I will be able to, and that resolution will still be able to cover them. Uh, so if something comes up, you get sick or won't be able to make it, I go, you're still covered. And that's what, uh, that's what that resolution is on for tonight. Uh, 2024 capital improvement plan, we touched on this, had a great discussion about the capital improvement plan at the work session. Um, we will require legal ad, these dates are going to change because we're gonna actually push that meeting back to around the, uh, uh, maybe the first week of November. So all that's going to change, uh, so just disregard all that and then I will have an updated schedule at the next council meeting. Uh, upcoming, liability insurance renew, uh, that will probably be another emergency ordinance. Uh, this time of year, we have emergency ordinances just because we need to get things in and effective. Uh, also, the health insurance reno uh, uh, renewal, the form fires were due today. Uh, form fire is what our staff uses. They go and answer uh, private medical uh, questions, uh, maybe any kind of medications they're on. It's all private, and they, we send that to the insurance company, and they use that to help gain our quote. I am expecting an increase on health insurance. Uh, last year, we also saw a similar <coughs> increase, uh, but it was very uh, low compared to uh, all the other increases that were going on around, or, uh, going on around us. Uh, violent, volunteer Firefighters and Independent Services, that is a special insurance that we have for our firefighters. That is due November 1st, and that will not require any legislation from <coughs> council. This is something I do on behalf of the fire department and send off for them. That's all I have for the city manager report. I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Council, any questions for the city manager? <clears throat> All right, thank you very much, Mr. Bridge. Well, Mr. Manager, uh, moving down to comments from the members of the public. Anybody in the audience has any questions or comments for council or uh, administration, please go to the podium. We'll need your uh, name and address and try <clears throat> to keep it close to five minutes if possible, please. <clears throat> Linda Eggleston, Noah Kowski, 317 South Main Street. Um, just something that you need to think about. Um, during the, I have access to my house only through an alley. And during the festival, my alley was parked up. Uh, I barely made it through at all. Uh, and when you consider the condition of the alley with its potholes and whatever, it was touch and go. Um, I mentioned something to one of the citizens I was talking about with the parking. She had been complaining <coughs> as well. And she also has access to her house through an alley and was talking about the condition of her alley as well. So I think that we need to look at the condition of the alleys and the maintenance on those um, and consider if we're having a big event like this to limit parking in the alleys so that there's access. Thank, Thank you very much, Ms. Eggleston. Any questions or comments from her? No? Thank you very much. Anyone else? 
All right. Mr. Gorby? By all means. <clears throat> I know you're not shy to talk. I'm <laughs> well, I'm not a resident of New Carolina anymore. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I, I want to, the festival this year was good. I, what, go ahead. Even though you don't live here, I still need your address. Uh, I'll give my New Carlisle address. How about that? 408 Flora Avenue, New Carlisle. That's my property I own. There you go. How's that? That'll work. Uh, what it is, uh, I wanted to say something about the festival this year. Uh, I want to thank the fire department, chief trustee, did an outstanding job. Our deputies, great job. We had a little confusion in the beginning. They took care of it right away. I, I, for those that don't know, Friday night and Saturday and even Sunday was one of our biggest events we've ever had. The streets were blocked. We had cars choke our hot rods all the way down to the airport just about. There were incidents that happened at New Carlisle and they took care of it so fast that we didn't have anybody even tell us or say anything about it. These guys did an outstanding job. They really did. Matter of fact, I know this young man himself ran home, got his uniform on and came back out to help us out. So I appreciate you more than you'll ever know. Yes, sir. Uh, and Chief Trusty, we had a couple of people that fell, got hurt. His crew was there in a heartbeat, uh, took care of it. We're very fortunate to have such good crews here in Fairborn for such a small community. And I want to thank everybody in this group uh, and plus the council because I know you guys uh, don't always understand what we're doing or what's going on, but I know that Mike tries to keep everybody filled in. But we had our little ups and downs, but they were taken care of quickly as best we could. Um, we're still trying to learn and grow as we go. I know 15 years you think we'd have this by the tail, but we don't. <laughs> we. Uh, and the parking situation, I know we, we went and issued out uh, special passes for people that live there because we had so many people that were telling us they live there and they didn't. They just came in to get into town to have a place to park for the festival. Mm -hmm. So we tried to hit everybody up and we hit so many nice people that live down on Pike Street. They were like, thank you very much. Uh, no, and that most of them have just given up and they said, we're just not going to go out during the weekend. We'll stay here. <laughs> but thank you very much for the passes. And they said, we understand. So I think people are finally understanding that we do this once a year and they're very happy that it's here. Uh, we hope that all the businesses enjoy all the foot traffic that comes through and goes. I know it puts a big stress on the chief and some of the city guys. Ron Wright for the city. We couldn't ask for a better city man, I'm telling you. The guy's a trooper. Uh, I don't know if you all know, but he helps me at Christmas too. And uh, well, all the flight crew helped me around the, for Christmas and the ball drop. So uh, we're very fortunate to have a great small town that we can give people things for free as much as we can we have very understanding law enforcement and fire and city council that works with us we have a little bit of a little up and down with some of the local businesses and churches but we're working those out uh, we want to become more of a community thing we were trying to make more businesses and churches come with us and pick up with us we used to be kind of people that were running for politics we were kind of eh, we really don't want to bother people but then we realized it's a great opportunity for people to see who's out there and who's running and you get a chance to meet them because uh, a lot of people don't know these people by sight or by name, and when they come to New Carlisle, they actually can meet people that say, I don't know who this guy is, but they'll see him on the street and they'll say, hey, I'm glad to meet you. And then you, you get a chance to make your mind up whether you want to vote for him or not. So we're kind of doing a little service there, too, and we're happy to do that. Uh, what flight crew I have here, these guys do an outstanding job. Uh, Kara, you know, Roy here does motorcycle cruising and stuff. You know, Bruce does a little bit of everything. And Chuck and Debbie, Debbie's our treasurer. Chuck is just a workhorse that does it all. My wife, who just puts up with me never being around for a long period of time. <laughs> you know, I, I, take, I, take two, I take two weeks off out of the year, a week before and the week after, just to survive Heritage of Flight. We really don't get anything out of it other than the enjoyment of just watching people have a good time. And it means a lot to us because when those rides hit town, that stage goes up, there is a buzz all over. The kids, it's something they look forward to. So uh, I think council, you guys should be very proud that New Carlisle has this happening. I know uh, we are. I mean, there's times we want to walk away and quit, but uh, because we're on a very big committee, we're less than probably about 15, 16 people. We're getting more people on every now and then to help us out, but we are thrilled to be able to do this for New Carlisle. Anybody want to ask me anything? I'm more than willing to help out here. Mr. Rice Mayor. Yes, sir. Marshall. Yes, sir. I forgot your last name. Gordon. Gordon. <laughs> uh, I think you guys, uh, I was up for a little bit uh, over the weekend there on Saturday. I was up there yesterday morning and uh, uh, Friday. The uh, car show, I understand, had over 900 vehicles. I think that's a record. It is. Uh, I never did hear how much food 
The mile of food, did you make the mile? We did not make the mile. We were very disappointed. Did you get close? We, well, we went a football field farther than we went last year. Well. And, yeah. go ahead, I'm sorry. That, that's better than uh, football short. Exactly <laughs> right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, my hat's off to, to you, the flight crew. Uh, I know the mayor uh, works pretty hard, and, and Mrs. Lowry works pretty hard on that, along with other things here in the city. The uh, I thought it was an awesome uh, event, what little bit of time I was able to spend up there. Well, thank you. And uh, everybody I talked to since then had a fabulous time. Thank you very much. You mentioned food, so I want to mention this. This will give you an idea as far as how much these vendors sell. Christian, the Fuentes family that, that uh, lock, lock and desolate number two, I asked him on Friday night or Thursday night because they were prepping all their vegetables and everything that they use for their tacos, how much meat they prepped for the weekend. He said they, this is just started with 15 five gallon buckets of steak. Wow. Oh. And they ran out and they had to do more. So, I mean, that just gives you an idea of how many people were in town. Wow. So, <laughs> our, goal is to, our goal is to become that, and we hope and we think we are, we want to be that. Mum Festival, that Strawberry Festival, we want people to know that the Heritage of Flight Festival is there with it. So, you know, Troy's got a great reputation for Strawberry Mum Festival, has got a great reputation, you know, and we want New Carlisle to be the exact same thing. I know we're nowhere near the size of those two, two cities, but we're definitely up there as far as, I know that people look forward to coming to our car show, and I know they visit the shops up and down the street. You know, we get a lot of good help. You know, Dale's out there taking pictures and getting stuff up on his site and stuff, that helps us a ton. We're very fortunate, and we want to become that part of that group that people will always remember as a uh, Mum Festival, Strawberry Festival, and a Heritage of Flight, and even Apple Butter. So and we haven't been around as long as they have, but we're hoping we will be. Anything else? You had something, Mr. Cobb? Yeah. Hit me. What'd you get a bump on your head? Oh, well. She finally got you, didn't she? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Lowry, Mrs. Lowry. <laughs> Mr. Borby, sir. Crew. All of them. They're great. I was unable to get up there because I'm having some hip trouble. And I want to thank you for what you do. You all deserve a good round of applause. Thank you. And I wish you'd learn how to do the chicken dance. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will tell you that McCall Fridax, who who came to who's our grand marshal this year. I don't know if everybody knows who she is. She's our chief meteorologist, and I'm fortunate enough to work with her and Jenna Lawson. And uh, when I asked her to be our grand marshal, she was very thrilled. And when she got here, she goes, you know, I've never had the opportunity to come to New Carlisle. And I was thinking, well, thank God. Because when, when she went to some of the other places, there was no places left to be there. So, but she was really happy to be here. And I think she had a really good time. Jenna Lawson loves New Carlisle. She comes here, and little kids love her, and they wave and say hi. All, all right, a lot of the older guys love her, too, but that's beside the point. But, I mean, they, she is very well liked in the community, and, uh, and she likes coming here. And I think that, you know, that says a lot for us. Anything else? Good. Thanks, sir. Ms. Hopkins. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. She's our favorite person right now. <laughs> no, you're her favorite person. Yeah. <laughs> and the festival's my favorite. Well, thank what you. they're referring to is I won the 50-50 raffle. I go Conflict of interest. Hand it over. We already tried that. <laughs> I was worried about that. Uh, I go every year, and I buy tickets, and I usually buy it more than we did this year. And my boyfriend and I bought the tickets. Well, he bought the tickets, and we split the money. That's awesome. Of course. <laughs> but I was so shocked. But I wanted to tell you, I do go to the festival every year, and I think it's a great, great event. It's a really big community event and you're right the little kids get excited and the adults get excited and i love the parade it was a lot of fun and i went to the car show it was really nice and very populated and um oh back to the food i volunteer at the food pantry and julie fisher is the person that manages it and she wanted to tell you thank you very much our Shelves were getting bare, and we had so much food brought in. Even though it was, they were hoping to get more than a football field more, it made a big difference to us. And she weighed it all, and it was 2,970 pounds. Wow. Well, we had an ashton barrel come in later, too, so we're hoping that might take us over 3,000. That'd be great. Well, see, oh, sorry, go ahead. I didn't mean to No, that's it. 
Well, what it was is we actually had, and this was uh, Chuck's idea, and, and Chuck Sharp, like I said, he's our workhorse. He, uh, he actually was smart enough to come down and ask the pantry what they wanted. And they said they not just canned foods, but they need cereal, you know, and other things, pastas and stuff like that. So our food weight may not have been as much because we did buy a lot of cereal. And some people thought, and we didn't think about it, or I didn't think about it, but baby food. We forgot about baby food and formula, which we're sure is a priority. <laughs> so next year we're going to try and emphasize on that, try and get more baby food and stuff for, for the families to have. Uh, I, I'm sorry, go ahead. For some reason, baby food doesn't go that well. Oh, really? And we have extra baby oh. food usually. I'm not sure why. Wick. But um, the cereals, oh, the cereals and the pastas, and that was really needed too. Well, good. Well, and um, that's good to know that we, because we were thinking they might need more. But trends change, so you know maybe next year we have it'll pick up. A lot of people have babies that <laughs> that they'll have the need. I don't know, but they do. right now we have a, enough baby food. But just like we were out of corn. Um, some of the shelves, like the pastas, were, were getting bare. And we have stuff in a little bit in storage in, in our other shelves, but it was really great. This was good timing. Yeah, we had a lot of local business. Abe opened up his door to let us store food in there. Fire department let us bring through their 571 uh, grill and draft house. They actually had a party. Dan Driscoll, who is a prosecutor, uh, tried to get the county more involved with us. Uh, so, yeah, it was, it was a nice event. And the thing I, I tell everybody is, Everybody thinks about people that are hungry during Thanksgiving and Christmas, and people are hungry all the time. It's not just Thanksgiving or Christmas, and we want to try and make sure that we're, we're geared up and prepared for that. So uh, that's why we do it. Well, I wanted to say one more thing. Sure. I want to thank everybody that worked at the, the festival. I was up there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I was just up there Saturday morning. I was up there all day Sunday, but um, I could see all the people that were working so hard. and. I want to thank everybody for the contribution because it really shows. Well, thank you very much. And we want to thank come to ROTC. Those kids, they literally work their tails off. Uh, they come to us and they want to do whatever we can do. Uh, there was some rumor we don't feed them, but they're contrary to belief. We do feed them. We offer them food, pizza, chicken. Lee's always offers it up. Uh, ben at Domino's Pizza gives us a great deal on pizza. Um, so we do everything. And we feed Chuck, too. <laughs> All the drinks, yeah, we buy coolers and keep them, keep them uh, full for them stuff. So it's a misunderstanding. Um, you know, people have those a lot, and we're kind of used to that. So it's not a bad thing if somebody doesn't understand, and we're willing, we're willing to answer those questions if anybody has any. But we do try to take care of them as best we can, and we'd be lost without them because we're all getting older. And the kitty tractor pull, we have to carry that little tractor back and forth. That's a lot of work. Any other questions? <clears throat> yes, sir. Still got a barrel of food at the station. You still got another barrel of food? Look at that. She's got another barrel of food. See that, Jay Chief? <laughs> I, w I do want to thank the council for letting us use the city. <laughs> uh, I, I know there's some people that always say, why does the city spend that kind of money on that festival? And we're like, well, the city helps us, but we, uh, we raise all our money. And we're fortunate that we have Fab Metals this year came through for us big time. Bobo Construction, Garage King. Uh, you know, we, we're really lucky that there's a lot of guys in this town that love this town. And they helped me through the year. You have no idea. Christmas parade, I need a generator. I call Jim Bobo, and he's got me two of them. I need a trailer, custom way welding. Use whatever you need, Marshall. So uh, New Carlisle Chrysler, we need a truck or two? Come and get the truck. Uh, my family works their tail off. Mikey's family, and you know, Chuck, Deb. If I need anything during the holiday or the ball drop, one of the flight crews there are more willing to help, and we are willing to take anybody on board that want to help us. The fire department's always there, picks up Santa Force at Andy Barnhart. When I came here in 1977, the biggest thing was watching the kids go out to the airport and watch Santa Claus fly in. And we kind of dropped that ball a little bit, and we wanted to bring it back because it's so cool to watch Santa fly in, and he has that wave out that airplane, and he brings it in. Dwayne Jones flies him in for us, you know? And just to watch the kids, you know, here comes Santa flying into our community. It's a great, great thing, and the firehouse opens up for us. It's, it's just a really great thing, and we want to invite you all to that the first Saturday in December, Christmas break. Another thing we're going to do, I know I'm running over time here on you guys. <laughs> since, since Ethan left, and he was, he was nice enough to do the tree lighting for us, it was just bad timing for us, or at least for me, on that Saturday night. We're going to try and do it on Friday night uh, before the parade. We have four giant blow-ups. Uh, Poor Mikey always knows this because I make him have to go pick them up for me. But we've got a 21-foot Frosty 
We have a 19 foot Rudolph and they all glow at night. We have a Santa on a sled. So we're gonna bring them down on trailers because a lot of business like Jeff's Automotive lets us park a trailer in there too. I mean, they're actually, New Carolina Lights uses their place to bring them too. We're gonna bring them out and have the tree lighting the Friday before the Christmas parade. And we're gonna light the tree. And we've had a couple people ask for big degree of choirs. So we're hoping that'll work out for us too. It won't be a big event, but it'll be just something nice to light the tree. All right, Marshall. Oh, go ahead, Mr. Bridge. Did you let the committee know that waste management donated to Dunkster? Uh, no, I did not know that. Uh, waste management for the second unit row has donated to Dunkster. We like that guy. <laughs> and we have a lot of waste, trust uh, me. There's no problem. Oh, well, they'll deal with that later. Though. All I know is I got the email said it's free, and that's what we're sticking to. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, Marshall, you always forget yourself, and you. Some people think you have the easiest job because you sit on stage and talk for the most of the time, and that's, that's not the only thing you do. But, but your voice is very important to the festival. Well, if you man. weren't there, I don't know who would entertain the crowd. Well, thank you. So, thank you. I do want to thank CVS. We were down running out of space, and I went into the manager and I said, "Hey, favorite manager, can I uh, <laughs> can I borrow half your lot?" Yeah, go ahead. So. About 15 minutes later, I go, hey, favorite manager, can I, borrow, can I borrow a little bit? He goes, look, man, you got to give me something. I said, well, can I just have the front by the road? He goes, all right, but you got to leave me the front. I said, okay. And Scott and uh, Kim Griffith at Lee's, uh, we had a little bit of problem there, but we got cars, and she said, as long as you leave me the front, they gave us their lot, too. So there again, New Carlisle working out to help everybody. So yep. we're lucky. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right, anyone else in the public have anything else to say before we move on? All right, thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, let's see, comments, committee reports, the other night will drop down to resolutions. Ms. Burner, when you're ready. 19-15R public hearing in action tonight. A resolution appointing the city manager as the designee for the city of New Carlisle's mandatory public records training as required by the Ohio Public Records Act. Council? So to accept resolution 1915 Second. Second. Ms. Hopkins. Uh, explanation of this resolution. Uh, this is a, uh, a resolution that states uh, that if, uh, we have uh, all newly elected council members have to go to Sunshine Law Trading in the state of Ohio. Um, that is required by the Harvard Vice Code. Um, normally how that works is if they cannot attend, we pass a resolution that I go on their behalf, which is, is allowed in the state of Ohio. Uh, so this uh, particular resolution states that Ms. Peggy Eagleston and Ms. Amy Hopkins, um, if by chance they do not, cannot attend on the 24th, I can attend for them and this will cover that. Council, any questions? When you're ready, Ms. Burner. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Ms. Eggleston. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. All right, dropping down to ordinances when you're ready, please. Ordinances 19 29E, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action Tonight. And ordinance amending ordinance 18 30E regarding natural gas supply services for use within the city of New Carlisle, Ohio, and declaring an emergency. Council? So moved. Second. second. Mr. Shammy, second. An explanation of this ordinance. This is uh, an emergency ordinance, which only requires six members uh, vote to pass it, but it is effective immediately. Um, we had a chance to renegotiate. Um, this one is, has to do with our natural gas rates. We currently have a contract uh, that calls for $4.62, $4.62 per MCF. Uh, this contract reduction will call for $4.24 per MCF and we'll save the city approximately $1,172 annually. Any questions, Council? <coughs> when you're ready. Ms. Hawkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. <coughs> Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shannon? Yes. Motion accepted, seven. Thank you, ma'am, and when you're ready. 19-30E, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action, <laughs> and Ordinance Amending Ordinance 17-43E, Regarding Electric Generation Supply Services for Use Within the City of New Carlisle, Ohio, and Declaring an Emergency. 
Council. Mr. Mayor, move to accept ordinance 1930D. Second. Uh, explanation of this ordinance. This is also an emergency ordinance that requires six people, uh, six council members vote. Uh, this is a mirror to our, the last uh, previous ordinance we did. This one has to deal with our electric consumption. Uh, the current rate right now is zero points. Um, I don't have that on here. Uh, so we are negotiating a lower rate of 0 0.0489 uh, per kilowatt hour. That move will save the city annually $4,000 $4,056, so about $4,000 a year annually. Council, any questions for Mr. Bridge? Are we saving those pennies? I try my best. Good job. I try. <laughs> what was that? He said your hair looks nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new shine. It's called less glare. When, when you're ready, Ms. Burner. Thank you. Hi, Mayor Lindsay. <laughs> yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Mr. Shannon. <laughs> Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Motion accepted 7 0. Okay, we'll go to other business. Ms. Burner, if you want to read that, and then after so, we can jump back on to real quick what we were discussing in the work session, if you guys would like, if that's okay. Ms. Burner? Congressman Warren Davidson will hold his mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month from 1 30 p.m. until 2. The crime watch meeting will take place Wednesday, October 9th at 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. And the city offices will be closed on Monday, October 14th for Columbus Day. Thank you very much. All right, if I am remembering correctly, we will need to make a motion to amend the CIP, correct? To Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Move to make a motion to amend the CIP to take 55,000, I think it was. <laughs> Is that correct? Um, let me think. It was 85,000. And then you might want to do the motion separate because it's 50. It's 55 and 40. It was 50, 50 and 35. It was 50 for the shelter house. And then five. It's, yeah, so it was 50 for the out here. Yeah. Payment, yeah. And then 30,000, 35,000 for the salt brine system. Right. Right. Yeah. 5,000 for parks and rec. 90, I think it was. No. We're, yeah. wait, what? I, from the I only got 85. Yeah. I'm not trying to be funny. Like I got outside. the 30, like 35 and then the 50. Yeah, but plus yeah. five from the park. But we also took 5,000 from the park. Yeah. Wait a minute. What's 5,000 trying to take from the park? I still got 5,000 sitting there. Right. Parks and Rec. Oh, the Parks and Rec. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Oh, okay. I thought it was like, I, I thought it was a line out in the CID. We could take down your ways. Yeah, that, that's already done established. Good luck. Yeah, with that. I've been paid three times already since. So Mr. I guess I guess the motion needs to be made to to take the fifty thousand from the shelter house shelter house remodeling for the road out here uh, thirty five thousand, and I don't know what fund it's in water uh, water streets, streets. or streets for the salt, salt brine and. 5000 from the Parks and Recs for a total of $90,000. With that $90,000, you're writing all this down, uh, oh, to replace the 2000 K2500 with a plow and the pickup truck from the cemetery, uh, as I'd say, as soon as we can probably get those. Okay. You don't need to do anything with the 5000 from the Parks and Rec. Okay. I mean, for the spe for that special events in the budget already. Okay. Um, you'll just have to amend the CIP, and then okay. what we'll do with the five thousand dollars that's in for the wine item on the uh, special events of Parks and Rec, we just have to redo. We have to amend the budget, which was Ordinance 19. -05. We're going to do all that next meeting, right? And amend that to uh, re reallocate that five thousand. So, what motion do you want now? You need to have a motion to amend your CIP. He, motion. I made the motion to amend Second. the CIP. Just, yeah. Second by Mr. Stammy. <laughs> and you have, this, you have another motion to put it back. To amend the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll do the vote on this one. Okay. So two separate items. Right. Okay. So when you're ready. We are voting on the amendment to the CIP. Correct. Yes. Mr. Stammy wants the second. <clears throat> are we ready to vote? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? Yes. Ms. Eggleston? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lewis? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Mr. Shane? Yes. 
right. Motion accepted. Zero. And then we'll need a motion. Another motion. And I'll make the motion to amend the budget. Do you really think we need to take that five thousand out of there, though? Do you think I don't think we'll need it. it? I think the eighty-five will cover it. Because here's the thing with that. It's just going to get sunk back into the general fund. Right. So I think that, can you guys let's leave these prices out with what we have with the 85 opposed yeah. to the five so we don't have to mess with the budget? I think he, I, I think the Mr. 80, Kitko, I think said he was pretty sure it would cover it. So. Yeah, the 85 would cover the two trucks is what he told us. Yeah, I don't think we need to take five out of the budget. All right. To amend uh, the budget. Do I have to go through what we're taking money from or just the budget to purchase these trucks? No. Oh, yeah. I, I don't think we need to you do that here. Do that now. We'll just return your motion. Okay. Now, if it comes back, we need like $1,000, then we'll have to come back at the next meeting and okay. say, here, oh, we'll just bring an ordinance. <laughs> okay. okay. So we're good. Or you can just take it out of the park and rectify that. Yeah, we, we have to end of the year to knock that a little bit. But the CIP needs to be done. Okay. Is that? I guess the only question I would have on these two trucks is, and Mr. Kiko isn't here, uh, so I guess you could answer that because you're probably being charged maybe okay. to, to get that done. When will these trucks, after the next meeting, when will these trucks be ordered? Or, and I'd like to see 19, if you can get them. Sure, sure. Um, I think we passed the resolution via, I mean the CIP via a resolution. So we'll have to amend whatever legislative view that was, whether it's we amend it, we amend the ordinance, whether we amend that resolution. And I say that because if it was a resolution, we have to amend the resolution. We don't have an emergency resolution mm -hmm. on our charter. We have to go through the normal. We introduce it. You guys pass it by uh, at least four to pass it. We have to wait to 15 days. However, if we um, uh, pass that CIP by a ordinance earlier in the year, uh, well, beginning of last year, we can amend that ordinance with another ordinance and make that an emergency so it requires <coughs> but yet we bypass that 15 day waiting period. Okay. So it depends on how but I'm almost positive it was we probably did it via resolution. Hold on, I I, I know this. But you'll have whatever we need at the next meeting, whether it be a you'll have, yeah, you'll have ordinance. You mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I really think though doing this at this time. Mr. Bridge, we could probably save some money since the 19s are rolling out and 20s are coming sure. in. Mm -hmm. So it might work out to our benefit. It might, actually. Yeah. Um, let me see if I have the legislation pieces on here for 19. I usually keep all that legal education legislation. Mm, I don't have it on here. I have to look. Uh, let me see something. And then, uh, Mr. Mayor. Sir. Uh, Mr. Bridge, I would I would think if council agrees with me that the uh, we should be looking at some pricing on the F550, uh, the 2000 from the street department, and and see what it would cost to replace that. No, that's a uh, that's a ton. That's a, it's ton, a ton, ton and a half. Ton and a half yeah. When I spoke with the city mechanic this morning, and then also Howie, uh, they both feel it's a half ton would be suffice for the cemetery and the general drive around the city street. Exactly, but the street department did what I'm talking about is 2000 F550, which is a dump truck, plow, salt truck. It's the first one on the list. Mm -hmm. He's just wanting the price on it. I, I would oh, like gotcha. to have a price to see what ballpark area is going to, how much we need to, to do that so we can see how much we have in that uh, street fund and the the gas tax that will be coming in next year. And hopefully we can pay cash for that one also is what I'd like to see. Unless there's another truck here that, uh, I mean, the, the 2000 is, is, the, uh, is the two oldest trucks. The first two on the list for the street department, I think, are the priority with the second one being the one we're going to yes, the second, now and then the second replacing one. that one. And then the cemetery being. And honestly, I mean, we're going to receive an estimated an additional 130 from the gas tax in 2020 when we do our CIP. Mm -hmm. You guys will say, hey, in 2020, we want to place that first right. one on yeah. the list. And what I would, like, I would like to see if we, if you guys want more than one vehicle, well, we're going to do one this year and then one next year. Um, anything subsequent from that, I think that we still need to hire another staff person for the street department. Right. 
to be honest with you, because they're, out of all our departments, they're probably the most short staffed. I take that back, the water department isn't out because we have an employee quit. Um, but, you know, I would like to see kind of that money get reinvested back into our personnel department at some point in time to help offset the load of what our current street guys do, because they're not also responsible for all the street work, but they're also responsible for all the abatements that we do in town, cutting the grass, cleaning the property. So if we got a lot of street repair, some things get pushed back. And if we have another staff member on present, we can uh, expedite those projects. The, this five, this F five fifty, I think, will cost sixty, seventy, probably uh, closer to a hundred. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. because it's a, it's a dump and a salt, and the dump we currently have will not fit on the nineteen or mm -hmm. twenty. In fact, when we do this next year, you won't even be able to get a nineteen. It'll have to be a twenty or a twenty-one. So, <clears throat> depending on the time of year we do it, that we uh, we jump on that or pull the trigger on that. Sure. Mr. Cobb. Thank you. Give you an answer on your 350. Yes, sir. Now this is just the bottom of the bike. On the 350. On the 350. Okay. Is anywhere between 80 and 87 thousand dollars. On the 350. On the 350. So that 550, I missed it by probably 50 grand. <laughs> Thank you, okay, Mr. Cobb. Well, I was just guessing. I didn't know what a 550 would cost. Well, I'll have to get some prices for you guys. I mean, yeah. I would say a few. We can talk about that. Okay. That's, honestly, we can we can do that in 2020. Yeah. Just use that additional one, one thirty. You good, Mr. Cobb? Call today. Yeah, All right. Right. All right. Yeah, I, yeah, I just had no idea. Hang on, Mr. Vice Mayor. Hang on. Mr. Shammy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Bridge, mm -hmm. I have an idea. What's up? Why don't we use the old trucks for uh, salt and plow and just give them a standard F-250 or something like that? What was, what, what was the question? Use the old trucks. Purchase the new trucks as... as but use the utilize the older ones for salting and plowing the roads, and that way. I'll write my out. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> that's Howie's apartment, so I let him see. I don't know. Yeah, have yeah, yeah the fact that they're all rusted out right now. They are a lot of them. I mean, the cemetery. They just yeah. the cemetery yeah. part yeah. Yeah. You know, for a couple hundred dollars. So. All right, anyone else? Nope. We good? All right. And moving on, other business, anything else? Oh, you want to correct the 15th on the bottom? Oh, yeah, and the yeah. Bottom, if you have the agenda, it says the next meeting, the 15th, is actually the 21st. I won't own that mistake. Uh, this is the first year that we've actually not had a council meeting during Columbus Day week. Hmm? So in my head, I was thinking, oh, we have Columbus Day, we'll have a meeting on Tuesday. Yeah, Monday. it's not true at all. 21st. Okay. Well, hopefully you can still come on the 21st. All right, anything else, Mr. Bridge? I'm good. Council? No. Mr. Cook? As in the past, we have had a candidate's night. What has council thought about having a candidate's night here shortly before the election? No oh, candidate's night. I thought you said candidate night. Canada? Yeah, like celebrate Canada. I'm like, I don't remember this. Canada. <laughs> you know, one of them guys who doesn't sit up here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna comment on it just because I'm up well, for election, so <laughs> Peggy, have you heard anything back? I contacted Ron Ledford with Gateway Business Group and she is checking to see if they might be able to sponsor a candidate's night. Okay. Well, do we have an open night in the shelter house? Let me see. Oh, I'll see if I can access the calendar. So. You hear the crickets? Yes. Yeah. It's time to go. Normally, I think the Comstock sponsors them. The city has never sponsored one except for in the special election. And uh, I don't even think the city sponsored it, but the, uh, I don't have access to the calendar. Um, find, I'd say find out. It's not a, you guys done crime watching Wednesday down to the beginning of the year? Um, the October, no, November will be the last one. October will be the last one. one for this year. Okay. So if it's past the um, second Wednesday in October, Wednesdays are open well, until the first of the year. Yeah. You said where is the fire? Actually, it's the ninth. Of what? Where'd you say? 
I'm talking about if you want, if we host it, like if they want to, I think, was it here, the Canada site? Yeah, we I gave you guys the shelter house? Yes. Yeah, so Wednesday, I don't, we have one night of the week, and I want to say it's Tuesday night that Lifeway Church re gets it on a regular basis. Other than that, Monday nights, we usually have okay. it here. On off council meeting Mondays, really, no one really ever has it. We have a meeting in November. Oh, you do have one in November. So, and at the past, the second one in, well, well, All right, well, Peggy, I'd say, no, Peggy, you just, election, but here, here's, here's the thing, it's still in the open, fire chief is Seven really gracious with letting us use his place Let's, as well. November 7th. Okay, everybody, hold up for a minute. I'm his boss, he has to say that. <laughs> let's, uh, Peggy, let's get back to this when you get your answer from uh, Rhonda Ledford, and we'll get back to it. And I wanted to bring up mentioning, mentioning Gateway. Um, I went to their last two meetings. And I know that Rhonda invited everyone from council. And the one at Mother Stewart's and their, Springfield. Their rebranding party. Um, that was a gentleman who went into Bell Fountain and revived a dying city. And that is something that council should have been at. He had amazing information, and it did not take long for him to bring Bill Fountain back to a street, walking pe people walking down Main Street, and businesses growing and bringing businesses in. I, it was just, it was an amazing meeting, and it's something that I think council, if we want to grow New Isle, needs to hear him talk. Thank you. Anyone else? Scott. Mr. Freed, I want to ask a quick question. Sure. The tree sweep that we had in that one, is that ours? Or do we Man, no, it's not ours. Nope. Okay, you know he took up all the uh, dirt pads that was on the street? I got three complaints. I normally get zero complaints from the street company. Um, we had some issues with it this year, how we had addressed it. I don't know if he's addressed it with the company yet. Uh, I know he went down Galwood. He wasn't supposed to go down Galwood because of the street done. He went through a dirt pile and ended up dragging the dirt all the way down one of the side streets. So this was a awkward year with the street chief. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Yes. But I, yeah, it has been brought to my attention. He was dry sweet, but he was not putting water with the brushes. I saw him go down late. I saw the trail, but I, there was definitely some issues this year. And like I say, when he, when he went along, he was taking up the dirt patch that was down the street. Oh, yep, yep, I heard that too. So, yeah, we are aware of that. Yeah. He also had a big fall yeah, cloud. cloud Mr. Mr. Yeah. Sir, you done, Scott? Yes, sir. Right. I was just commenting on uh, Mr. Cobb. Uh, they had a, when they went by uh, his house, couldn't even see his house for the dust cloud. But mm. I thought, put some water on the street, kill the dust, will you? But it, uh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't it, think it, I it should it stop. It was an interesting year there. for street sweeping. It was. Anything else? Anything else? Ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Mayor. Roy, you, 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 I can tell you. I want to say something. No, I already don't want to say something. All right, Mr. Mayor. Sir. Second.